chrischampfkaijupop.com where we are in a murky swamp playing the ensign um, which is teaching us something to do with perseverance every now and then um, this is the prequel um, follow-up to a dark room which came out last year uh, by a guy called Emir Rajan and it was something that uh, I played a lot of and really 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 loved and it was kind of largely ignored for a long 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 time and then all of a sudden got really big uh, quite quite quickly uh, which was cool it was kind of a, a surprise success story uh, in the sort of field where a lot of people just talk about something very frenziedly when it comes out and then kind of forgot about it uh, here was something that, that most people you know didn't notice existed um, and then suddenly blew up. Uh, I knew our coverage of it suddenly got really popular very, very quickly. Um, so it was really nice to see that do well. And so this is the, the follow-up to that, the Ensign, um, which is, yeah, in, in story sense, it's a prequel to A Dark Room. Um, so there's already kind of a spoiler to The Dark Room right here at the start. Uh, I have to make it to the starship, if you know what that means. Um, so you should play A Dark Room first, or the game tells you, there's even a link down the bottom, um, to go ahead and get Dark Room. Uh, you should play a dark room first it it says I actually think probably though from an experience standpoint This is probably best played alongside a dark room at the same time uh, for reasons we'll get into um, So there's always this sort of choice at the beginning uh, whether you can take or refuse food and take a compass or uh, Refuse it uh, which kind of makes things a little bit harder a little bit easier um, as we go and then you're greeted with this screen, which um, might be familiar with you if you stuck with the dark room for a bit. Uh, dark room was opened out as a management uh, kind of game where you were managing resources and managing people in your own, uh, village, and then eventually you got to the point where you would go on the dusty trail, as the game called it, and you would kind of explore this this big world, get into scraps, and gradually build more resources and uncover more of the map. Uh, until you were able to lift off into space and what happens in a dark room uh, what's happened with the ensign here is um, you know it's kind of born out of apparently the developers you know enjoyment of a dusty trail uh, and certainly a dusty trail was more fun probably than the rest of a dark room but it was kind of the the rest of the dark room existed to support the dusty trail in a sense um, so this is all just dusty trail stuff it, it is all just exploring this map and uncovering more of it um, and as you might guess just by the the uh, the ASCII art here um, it is, it is, you know, the, the dusty trail in A Dark Room was very much inspired by Rogue, and this is a lot more roguelike. Um, there is permadeath in it. Once you die, you're dead. Uh, I started the game from scratch, as you saw at the beginning of the video, but this is, you know, about seventh or eighth attempt at this. Um, the map is random every time. Uh, locations are random every time. Uh, so it's roguelike in that regard. It's not dungeon crawly like a roguelike, so it's not like monsters are moving at the same time as you. It is more like you're you're going into these locations. Once you're in these places, it's kind of interactive fiction, choose your own adventure style, um, where you venture further in, there might be combat. And then once the combat happens, uh, much like Dark Room, it's built around timers. Um, so you wait for bars, I'm waiting for the bar underneath my fists uh, to fill up so that then I can punch. So you, you kind of rapidly attack your, your attacks. And the more you, the further you go, I really should have taken food from the town at the start and I didn't. Um, so that's a, a mistake. Hopefully there's some food on the ground here. Yes, there is. Um, there we go. So I'm, I'm, much, I'm much better equipped now. Uh, you kind of have to manage your water um, because every time you move you consume water every time you move you know, a further distance you will also have to eat food as well if you run out of either you will die if you engage in combat and get killed obviously you will die um, but you also have to manage the space in your inventory um, and there's kind of crafting going on as well so at the start of the game uh, here if I manage to kill three creatures and take 
three units of flesh, then I can cook something which gets me more food. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't uncovered you know the rest of the, the crafting options as of yet. Um, this is incredibly difficult. It's incredibly, incredibly difficult. Um, that's the sort of pitch of it here. It's it's meant to be insanely difficult. Um, the uh, the app description kind of reads that you know. I mean, it strongly doubts that that many people will will make the end of this game. Um, but uh, it is wholly about sort of exploring this world. And as I said, when um, I played uh, A Dark Room, this kind of very minimalist uh, presentation, it looks like nothing, but it, it really, I think, cultivates this sense of, of loneliness in this world. And, um, you know, it, I think that plus these these descriptions, which are very vivid of the environment and the occasional story pop ups like you saw at the beginning, um, it kind of it's very good at, at crafting this this desolate, empty. You know, it's just these little things. My my fist damage is leveled up, but the the fact that it chooses to tell me in such a way, it kind of it's very good at building an atmosphere. Um, I love the descriptions of these places and. Um, you know, description of this this old house with the uh, the white siding yellowed and peeling, the door hanging open. It's it's very good. It's it's like very powerfully written stuff. Um, the problem with that I have with the ensign in particular, really, um, is that I think everybody preferred or everybody enjoyed um, the dusty path uh, part, the exploration. Um, segment of a dark room, but certainly for me, the reason why is I'm gonna hop down here because to manage my uh, goods here, I'm gonna get rid of the teeth and the flesh that I have equipped because I don't need them, and then carry back on. Uh, but the risk with with doing that of dropping off equipment in a safe place is that you use food to head back to your murky swamp, so it's, it's a little bit annoying. Um, I think, you know, the, the reason why um, Dusty Path was, was so powerful in a dark room was because you had um, this little village and you had the management stuff to lead up to it. It was almost like the the big game reveal in a Frog Factions, you know, as uh, I go through the limited um, pathfinding here, um, you know, where you, you kind of played something that, that seemed very innocuous, almost dull, and then you kind of uncovered this, this whole, uh, almost new lease of life on the game underneath it, um, that I thought was, was tremendous, and without that, it's not, it just doesn't quite have the same sense of wonder, um, especially as I think when you were exploring in the dark room, there was, because you had invested in the people and the items you were crafting to take on your journey and it was all persistent, um, I should be able to there we go. We should be able to go back and do some cooking now. Hooray! Oh, and a sword. Oh, great. And we'll take that. But now I'm over encumbered. Drop the pies. Drop the eyes. There we go. And then I'll head back. Um, but I'm going to run out of food on the way. Oh, no. There we go. Just in time. I cook these three flash. And then I get three food. Well, that wasn't really worth it, was it? Oh well. Oh no! Uh, get rid of the teeth. Get rid of the torch, I guess. Well, now I can't uh, go into caves. Um, I think there was this, this thing in a Dark Room of really investing, not in your people, because it was um, very deliberately um, non-personal and, and uh, you know, very distant um, in its writing, but you were kind of invested in your resources and invested in how far you were down into a tech tree, I guess. Um, hooray, a tannery, I've been around here. Cool, I can get all kinds of stuff. Let's attack it. 
um, with my sword. And there was this this sense of, of a new community and um, kind of exploring a, a strange new land and then exploiting it and raping it. And here, there isn't that, because there's, there's not this persistency, it also feels that there's nothing on the line with each sort of encounter. Um, and I'm just one guy going out and kind of uncovering more of this map at any one time, but I know that once it's, you know, once I'm dead, then it's done. And um, it's not a bad thing, you know, it's it's just that I'm not quite sure a, a complete roguelike structure really um, helps uh, the ensign. Um, from the point of view of it, it being a dark room follow up, um, I kind of that's why I kind of think that it's it's probably better to play this alongside a dark room rather than after it, um, because I think you you would probably play a dark room thinking, oh yeah, the dusty path stuff is the most fun part of the game, um, but also without the rest of it, without the management aspect of it, which is the probably the the less fun part of the game but perhaps more interesting in a way um as oh that's a nice thing i haven't encountered that before so i've come out of the tannery with a, a much bigger pack so i can carry more stuff i should really pay attention to what the game's telling me uh instead of just uh talking all the time such is uh you know youtube commentary um yeah i i just kind of think that it needs this stuff it it needs um the persistency um, that having the perhaps more boring but but also more interesting uh, if more boring but more interesting that sounds stupid um, but you know the the less the less mechanically involving um, but the more thematically interesting there you go um, kind of aspects of, of management that that really made uh, what exploration was, you know, more important uh, in a dark room. So, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I can recommend the ensign as highly as I do uh, the dark room. I strongly suggest that that you head out and and play that uh, as as much as you can and be wholly absorbed by that as I was um, before you even think about uh, touching the ensign. But this is just a really interesting, uh, you know, it is still fun. It is still, um, you know, it, it's really absorbing to, to go through this, this strange world and, and see what it has. Um, and it constantly, you know, even so far, you know, being very early on, it's, it's kind of cool to see the surprises and, and the little things it has in store and the weird creatures that there are to fight. Um, I don't think I'm long for this world at the moment. Um, because I'm really running out of food. Hey, lucky, found some on the ground. Um, I'm lucking out on playing online here, you know, perhaps just just for the use of the, of this of this uh, little YouTube vignette here. I'm I'm suddenly doing much better at the game than I was. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do think, yeah, it, it is full of its own little surprises and this, this very, very well detailed world, as, as much as it is shuffled up every time, it, it's in its little parts that, that are being mixed up and randomized. Um, it's incredibly, you know, detailed and, and incredibly atmospheric and uh, really something that's, that's worth checking out. But don't go into it expecting more of a dark room because it's it's very different. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that, that it's any less worthwhile. Um, I don't think it's it's still well worth checking out. Uh, let's see how far I can get through the deserted town here. I'm in desperately need in desperate need of more resources. Uh, eat some food to recover some health. I uh, take more of that. I can get a better sword as well. This is doing well. It's all turning up me here. Uh, let's see. I'm taking more food. Hooray! I'm on a real 
sort of rush here. I mean, it, it kind of comes, you know, I don't know. It's perhaps as well a victim of there being so many games that are like this, albeit uh, very few that, that go the whole hog of, of having the ASCII presentation of, of being very, you know, of going whole hog with, with the roguelike thing and then supporting that with text, um, you know, to make it more, uh, you know, fleshed out, uh, which is a really great approach um or a really great solution to having a a sort of low development budget um you know but that all that being said there are still sort of tons of roguelikes about right now um so it's kind of it's difficult to play it from the point of view of well okay there's another roguelike here uh rather than with a dark room where it was kind of a little bit more of this is something that you haven't really played anything like before. Um, so, you know, it's a victim of its own success, I think, in, the, in that regard. Uh, I'm going to take one of these bowlers. Bowlers are good because they can stun enemies. And... Feral Terror. Oh dear. I'm definitely going to need to stun this guy because I'm in big trouble here. Big trouble. I'm dead. Death. Here we go. And you get a little bit of a sort of wrap up of how well you did. Um, so as well as the total time you played. Um, so I really haven't sunk that much into this game yet. Um, I'm not really sure how much I will. I mean, I sunk literally dozens of hours into a dark crew. I think because the persistency was such a huge draw. Um, I'm not really sure um, how much I... I going to sink into the inside. I guess time will tell. Um, you know, in just the bid to sort of clear as, as much of it as I can, you know, uh, only 5% of the world covered in that 15 minutes um, and 8% of the areas in the game cleared. Uh, so there's really a lot to, to cover and it's it's very doubtful that you will get through all of it. Um, and as well, nice, I like the, the time paradox. That's a, uh, a Metal Gear Solid reference. I think it is a Metal Gear Solid 3 reference here. Um, but yeah, going through all that and then starting over again, and yes, you get these little messages feeding, feeding in every time. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, oh, I don't know. I, I really like it. It is really good still. Um, but it's not quite as good as a dark room. Um, so yeah, certainly if you're looking for something to, to supplement the experience you had with that, then, then get the Ensign still. Um, it's 99 cents or 100 yen or whatever that is <laughs> equivalent in wherever you are. Uh, it's on the App Store right now. ChrisChartForKaijiPop.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.